Welcome to my measurement review. I'm putting this together to help some people out who may be having some trouble with measurement and need a little help. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get started on um, metric conversions. So here we have our conversion staircase and it's a good way of thinking about conversions if you need to do them. Um, the most important part is right here which is our base unit and that tells us what exactly we're measuring. Uh, meters is for things like length, area, volume, things like that. Grams is for mass, liters is for volume. As you'll notice on the staircase we have different amounts. So we have thousand, hundred, etc. And that reflects how many of our base unit thing we have. If we were, for example, measuring something in meters and we had a kilometer, so that would mean we have a thousand meters. If on the other hand we had a centimeter, that would mean we would have one hundredth of a meter. I forgot to put my brackets here, so just bear with me for one moment while I do this. Okay, there we go. Um, so kilo is a thousand, hecto is a hundred, ten is deca, our base unit is just one, deci is one tenth, centi is one hundredth, and a milli is one thousandth. Okay, so it takes a thousand millimeters to make one milli uh, one meter. It takes a thousand meters to make one kilometer. Now, if we want to convert something, say we have three kilograms, three kg. Okay, um, and we want to get to grams. We want to see how many of our base unit we have. What we do is for every step of the staircase. Um, between our starting unit and our ending unit, we multiply by 10. So how many steps do we have? We have 1, 2, 3 to get to the base unit. So that means we're going to have to multiply by 10 for each step. 10 by 10 by 10. You could uh, simplify that as by 1,000. So 3 kilograms times 1,000 equals 3,000 grams. And that's exactly what we have. Okay, That's exactly what 3 kilograms is. It is 3,000 grams. If, on the other hand, we have um, 20 milligrams and we want to see how many centigrams it would be, we divide by 10 for every step. So there's one step between centi and milli, so that means we divide by 10 once. And 20 divided by 10 equals 2. So 20 milligrams equals 2 centigrams. So just to sum up, if you're going from a bigger unit to a smaller unit, you multiply by 10 for each step. If you're going from a smaller unit to a bigger unit, you divide by 10 for each step. If you had 2,000 millimeters and you wanted to find out how many meters you would get, what you do is you divide by 10 for each step. 2,000 millimeters divided by 10 would give you 200 centimeters. 200 centimeters divided by 10 would give you 20 decimeters. 20 decimeters divided by 10 would give you 2 meters. And so we would expect that as we go up the staircase, we're going to have fewer and fewer of our unit. Next, I want to talk about area and perimeter. Area and perimeter are pretty important uses of measurement and they apply to lots of different things. Perimeter refers to the distance around the outside of a polygon and area refers to the amount of space covered by a polygon and that's measured in square units. So let's take a look at a rectangle here. Okay, So this is a rectangle which is four units long so one unit, two unit, three unit, four units and it's by three units wide, one, two, three units wide we can say that this is a, a 4 by 3 rectangle. If we were to count the squares inside here created by the intersection of these lines that we drew, 
we would count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 square units. So the area of this figure is 12 square units. So how do you calculate area of a uh, rectangle? You calculate area of a rectangle by doing area equals length, I'll do a cursive L there, times width. Okay? Area equals length times width. Okay? In our previous example, our length was four units. And our width was three units. Notice how I'm rewriting the equation so that I can keep on track. Finally, I'm just going to do that calculation right here. And I'll find that my area equals 12 units squared. Units times units will give you units squared. Okay? And that's exactly what we saw in this example right here. Next, let's take a look at this um, parallelogram. Okay? So we have a couple measurements here. We have this side length and that's 8 centimeters. We have this side length which is 3.5 centimeters and we have this line which is 3 centimeters. This particular line because it intersects this line at a 90 degree angle is called the height and it connects the two bases. So this will be our base of the parallelogram. These two lines are our bases and our height connects the two bases at a 90 degree angle indicated by this little box right here. Okay? This side length is not very useful to us unless we're calculating the perimeter. If we're calculating the perimeter, it's very useful to us because the perimeter, again, is the outside edge. So in this case, if we were looking for our perimeter, what we would do is we would add 3.5 plus 3.5, which is 7. We would add 8 to that, which is 15. And then we'd add this 8 to that, which would be 23. So the perimeter of this figure is 23 centimeters, which we got by adding. Okay, we could do it a different way too. We could do 8 times 2, which is 16, plus 3.5 times 2, which is 7. So 16 plus 7 would also give us 23. A couple different ways to calculate perimeter, but the basic strategy is to add the outside ed edges. If we want to get the area of a parallelogram though, we have to do something different. We need to multiply our base and our height. So I'm going to write down in uh, colored pencil the things we know and the things we don't know. The big thing that we don't know that we're looking for right now is the area. That's what we're looking for. And how do we calculate it? Area in a parallelogram equals base times height. Okay. Remember the height is 90 degrees to the base and it connects both bases. Now, what do we know? Do we know the base? Yes, we do. Our base right here is indicated with the letter B. Okay, so I'm going to circle this B here. We also know our height. Our height is right here and it's also given for us as 3 centimeters. What I'm going to do to solve this question is I'm going to rewrite the equation with the relevant information. So instead of B times H, I'm going to write 8 centimeters by 3 centimeters. So 8 centimeters times 3 centimeters, and that will give us our area, which is now 24 centimeters squared. Okay, And so this right here is exactly how you should be showing your work. You should be looking for things you know, things you don't know, in order to figure out your equation. Triangles are a little bit trickier, okay? Because every triangle is technically half of a parallelogram. If we look up here, the area of a parallelogram is base times height. We can imagine a similar triangle, a congruent triangle, that we could just sort of add to this. not to scale, but you get the idea, where this would be a um, parallelogram. If we look at this parallelogram like that, and again, 
not to scale. I apologize for it being off a bit. But we can see that the height here is 5, and our base is still 8 centimeters. So again, we are looking for our area. An area of a triangle is equivalent to base times height divided by 2. You could also write that as base times height over 2, or you could uh, um, also indicate that as um, half of the base times height. But we'll just look at this one for now, base times height divided by 2. So what information do we know, which I'll indicate in green? Well, we know what our base is. We also know what our height is. And so all we have to do here is solve our equation. So area equals base times height divided by 2. So area equals 8, which is our base, 8 centimeters, times our height, which is 5 centimeters. And that's all divided by 2. So therefore, our area is, oh, sorry about that. Our area is 40 centimeters squared divided by 2. And so the area of this triangle, therefore, is 20 square centimeters. Again, indicate your formula. Substitute your uh, numbers that you have for the variables that you do know. Okay, so these are the things we know. We know our base. We know our height. Okay, and then just rewrite the equation with every step. As you do that, it'll be easier and easier for me as your teacher to visualize what you're thinking and to make sure that you understand the topic at hand. Thank you very much and I hope this helps.